As we begin to take a look here in section 3.2, um, we're going to look at using parallel lines and transversal. So we're going to build off of the angle relationships uh, that the previous video introduced. Okay. So the first postulate we're looking at here is called the corresponding angles postulate. And all that says is that, that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. Again, this entire video, the critical component here is that the lines are parallel. If these lines are parallel, cut by a transversal, angle 2 and angle 6 have to be congruent. So example 1 says the measure of three of the numbered angles is 125. Identify and explain. Okay, so in other words, we know if, if this is 125, then the corresponding angle has to be 125 because the lines are parallel. Okay, so that's 125. And then it should make sense, this is from the previous chapter. We know that these two angles have to be congruent, vertical angles, and these two angles also have to be congruent because of vertical angles. Okay, so, um, so those are the angles that have to have a measure of 125. All of the other angles, we could find the angle measures because we know that 4 and 2 are congruent, vertical angles. 6 and 8 are congruent because they're vertical. 2 and 6 have to be congruent because they're corresponding. And if you do 180 minus 125, since angle 1 and 2 form a linear pair, uh, then you'll find that each one of those angles has a measure of 55 degrees. The next theorem we're going to look at is called the alternate interior angles theorem. Um, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so same idea except now we're talking alternate interior. Alternate exterior, same idea. If the two lines are parallel cut by a transversal, alternate exterior angles are also congruent. Common theme here, they're all congruent with the exception of consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Okay? So if the lines are parallel, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. And again, we'll dive into this stuff a little bit more uh, once I see you guys in class. So uh, find the value of x. The lines are parallel. These are alternate interior, therefore they have to be the same measure. Divide both sides by 2. Value of x here is 40. Okay? Um, now here's what, the, the next one's kind of interesting because these angles here don't have any unique relationship directly, but we know that if this angle is 3x plus 7, then this angle is 3x plus 7, okay? And so we know that these two angles then are consecutive interior, which means they have to add up to 180 degrees, okay? So if I do that, 3x plus 7 plus x plus 5, they have to add up to 180, combined like terms. 4x plus 12 is 180. Subtract your 12 from both sides. Okay, and so we're sitting at, uh, we got 4x is equal to 168. If we divide both sides by 4, that tells us that x is equal to um, 42. Okay, x equals 42. Example three here, again, identify your angles. So we already know that this angle has to be 120 immediately, vertical angles congruence theorem. And then you identify that angle one and angle two are alternate interior. And since your lines are parallel, they also have to be congruent. So this is 120 as well. Okay. Some of you might have said, well, wait a second, angle two and this angle are corresponding, so they have to be congruent. It's fine. It's all a matter of how you see it. You know, um, These two angles here in, in part B, form a linear pair. So 180 minus 160 tells me that angle 1 has a measure of 120. And again, this 60 is corresponding with this angle 2, and therefore that angle has a measure of 60 degrees. Uh, and then the last example says the taxiway is being constructed uh, that intersects two parallel runways at an airport. You know that the measure of angle 2 is 98. What is the measure of angle 1? Well, they told us that these are parallel. If this guy has a measure of 98, Okay, angle 1 is alternate interior with it, so that also has a measure of 98 degrees. And how do you know is very simply the alternate interior angles theorem. Okay, so again, just getting you comfortable with these different types of angle relationships and the unique things that occur when the lines are parallel. So as always, have questions ready first thing in class.